The Tomorrow War, right? It's a sci-fi, science fiction, action thriller. And I could tell it was a fiction, right? Because a group of Americans, their family, are sitting down to watch the FIFA World Cup. Like, <laughs> 30 years in the future. We are fighting a war. Our enemy is not human. And we are losing. We need you to fight. I was like, yeah, I'm not it's sure this would happen. In America. <laughs> no, yeah, we, nice. Well done on saying football and not soccer. Exactly. I just wish in the final you could have let England have been in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. It was already yeah, so fictional yeah. having Americans watching football. <laughs> yeah. To put that, England at the World yeah, Cup, we just, just people would just much. be like, this is too much. Too much. Too much. <laughs> because I we just... still have aliens and stuff coming. We need to reserve a little bit of suspension of yeah. disbelief. I didn't just walk into that one. I, I put the mine on the floor and then jumped on it. Jumped on it, yeah, yeah, for sure. For us. Thank you for that. <laughs> so what is actually physically happening as actors on studio, on set, when you're jumping through time and space and into a swimming pool? That should be fun. Well, it really depends. I mean, um, there are various shots that uh, comprise that entire sequence. So there's some wire work. There's some harness work where we're being lifted into the air. And, fr you know, um, there's harness work where we're being dropped onto the ground. Mm -hmm. There's uh, water work where mm. we're really jumping from 10 or 15 feet up into a pool. I didn't do that that part. I'm not the greatest swimmer. So, you know, we had the stunt guy do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some under, there's some underwater work with great underwater camera rigs. It was a, a beast, absolute beast. So th there was a lot. It, it took a lot. It was probably, um, I'd say the sequence took about three or four days probably to shoot. And uh, I'll tell you that, that moment, that Chris, that image, was really crystallizing and seeing some of the previews for the ep for the show. I was like, wow, that's something I've never seen before. Yeah. And I just feel like, uh, you know, Doctor Who steps into a blue police box, walks out a door. You guys catapult into the floor. <laughs> that's going the extra mile. And I salute you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, no, there, there was a lot of uh, um, seeing the chiropractor uh, after, <laughs> after this movie. That's true. I did feel it was a bit cruel, Chris, that they go, we need to put this arm thing on you. Could you pop your top off? And you're like, really? Do, can I can I not roll up my sleeve? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Move your shirt, please. Wait, what's this for? It was just a test. Oh, a seatbelt. Was it a driving test? I remember, yeah, reading that scene. I was like, okay, here it is. The gratuitous shirtless scene. The shirtless scene. Yeah. Got to have one. I was like, I'm going to improv. Why do I have to take my shirt off? <laughs> into, the, into the scene. I think I did. I was like, why? 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 It's it just a test. It? Okay, it's cool. A test. Okay, right. cool. Cool. We wanted to see if you'd do it, and you would. So here we are. Yeah. Dedicate. <laughs> Dedicate. Boy, they say kids never come by unless they need something. Dad, I need your help. I'll get my coat. Imagine you're in some sort of time travel, time loop, apocalypse situation, who would you rather have by your side, Chris Pratt or Andy Samberg? Wow. I mean, that's a, that's a real 50-50. I like your hat. Of course you do. Um, who am I going to piss off? Uh, I'm going to go with Pratt because we're talking tomorrow war today. <laughs> he's also one of those very likable human beings it must be just enjoyable to see him to have him face off with you um yeah you know what it's just he's 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 one of those guys that's sort of infuriatingly likable you know it's like that's it you know, this guy is there like a, a picture of him in the attic somewhere where he's like disheveled you know horrible demon looking thing do you want to see something really dangerous? I feel like literally that's all I've been doing since I got here, but okay. Going back to the technical side of things, what are you acting off when you've got these white lizard tailed things? Because in my head, I wanted to be Sean Gunn in a onesie, but I know <laughs> wow. it's probably just you have to imagine it out of nothing. Well, we have an amazing stuntman named Troy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he is seven feet tall uh, and a mountain of a man. Yes, he a, is. a very formidable man. However, if you ever want to make a man feel less formidable, put him in a gray singlet. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, <laughs> but he did a great job. So he he did. He was the white spikes. Anytime there's an actual physical interaction in a wide shot where we need to push against something and you're seeing both us and the space that Troy fills up in the frame, we would use Troy. Oftentimes we would use a big rubber version of the white spike. And so you're opposite the white spike if you need to have just a little bit of the white spike in the frame, like a dirty frame. And then sometimes we would, and this is the most embarrassing, uh, act opposite nothing. nothing. And so that Absolutely is, uh, that's a, a learned skill and perhaps the most embarrassing of, of the acting uh, uh, trade, like yeah. the, of all the craft of acting, that that particular tool is one that's embarrassing to wield. I think we made it look good, though. Yeah, I think I, we made I, it look. Yeah. It looks great it in the end, great. but on yeah, the day, yeah. you look on like day, a ridiculous you look like an idiot. Yeah. for sure, <laughs> for sure. You're Please, shooting at, you know, a window. You know, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine in post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I've got a curiosity question for you, Chris. It's been a long time since you lived and worked in the UK. And as I'm from British radio at the BBC, I was wondering, what do you miss most about the UK? What are your favorite parts of it? Is the pub culture? Is it the food? Probably not. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, listen, when the pub culture is as strong as it is in the UK, you don't need great food. You know what I mean? <laughs> food is just the thing you put on top to hold down the beer. <laughs> And so fish and chips and mashy peas and all that stuff, it does a great job of that. Um, I'll tell you what I miss. I, I really loved the seasons. And so being the few times that I've been able to live in the UK, seeing the springtime bloom into summer, I mean, there's not a more, you can feel it on the faces of the people because winters there are hard and they're wet and they're kind of cold and they're long. Right. And then the spring comes and it's a lot like where I grew up in Washington state. And all of a sudden the birds appear and the, the oaks begin to bloom and traffic slows down and people get a smile on their face. I love that. I love, I love the seasons there. And so I always miss that. And when I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to be there, especially if I can be there when, in spring turning the summer. You've genuinely made me like my own country a bit more there. <laughs> I, I suddenly felt myself going, maybe I should go to the UK in the spring. <laughs> I'm already here. I, yeah, I live. This is you're in it great. right now. I mean, you're, right now, you're in that season right now. You know what? I need to get outside more. Junkets, interviews. We've got to cut them out. Yeah. Leave the building. Um, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a My fantastic pleasure. rest of your day. Appreciate Cheers, it. guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio One movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.